Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. End of the weekend is upon us here. We got Monday coming up uh, rather quick here. Monday morning comes up really quickly. 3.6 earthquake, the latest quake there across the uh, Aleutian Trench. Also, it looks like an aftershock there, 2.8 around the area of Turkey. Quite a bit of swarming going on there from a 6.1 earthquake earlier uh, this morning. We'll check that out here in just a little bit. I do want to cover movement down here across the Middle America Trench. Now, this is a major subduction zone, fairly lengthy at that as well. Stretches a good portion here from Mexico. Uh, all the way southward here. Got a little swarm stirring up here around the Guatemala area. This is where the um, 5.9 earthquake struck here yesterday. Uh, so since then, we've seen a number of earthquakes there, but now a more recent 5.8 up north, uh, still along that subduction zone. So this is why I'm kind of watching this area here. Earlier this week, we had a 4.5 further down south. So things are on the move here across this major subduction zone that's very capable of producing mega quakes out here. And now this area around Guatemala here, just specifically in this zone, uh, looks like the last you know, last decent sized earthquake out here was an 8.2 back in 2017. Uh, does look like that's kind of where that uh, 5.8 struck here today. But uh, let me see here. Quite a few sevens, upper sevens as well. I guess, you know, they can get uh, into the eight range out there across that area. 1995 up along the Mexico section there, an eight pointer uh, for that magnitude, 8.0. Another eight pointer in that area. Lots of eights. So, good possibility. Not 100% certain here, but uh, we got to watch that uptick here because there has been some time passage out here. I believe area south here. Let's see when we last had a decent earthquake above seven pointer. Uh, that was seven seven back in 2001. So we're looking at 24 years uh, towards the El Salvador area. Uh, previous to that, uh, a lot of time passage there. That's what you got to look for in terms of uh, accumulated slip rate and uh, potential for further escalation there along the middle of America Trench. Again, that's a major subduction zone and it can produce big earthquakes. So watch that movement uh, that's hitting out there in the last week and more notably tonight, the 5.8. Uh, across the uh, eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Oil fields rocking and rolling, nothing new there. Uh, Southern California, I don't think we had anything above 2.5 today out here. Mostly smaller microquake movement on the map here, the latest a uh, little 1.2 on the North American side here of the plate boundary. Bay Area, pretty quiet. Northern California, two more earthquakes here. There may have been a handful more, but uh, maybe not showing up here on the map. Look at these little spikes. Those are little small microquakes, and that's at the uh, Petrolia station. Uh, so you'll see those throughout the day if you're watching the live stream. But nothing will come in here from the USGS just because it's probably too small of a magnitude for them to even really worry about. But the thing is, I like to watch is if it's kicking up or not. Because the trimmer map out here tonight, this is for tonight. Let me double check, make sure, or I should say through the day. Total tally, 336 epicenters of trimmer down here across the Northern California area as well. Uh, it does look like things are letting off around the Olympia area and starting to fill in more uh, along the Oregon north coast there of Oregon. Uh, either way, it's still continuing, building up uh, some steam up here along the Cascadia as far as the next, uh, far as the next big earthquake goes. We're building up some strain. A um, couple earthquakes there up in Washington today. Nothing showing up on Mount Rainier, but yeah, yeah you know me, I got to go double check this and make sure uh, because this morning we had already seen earthquake activity there across Mount Rainier. Sure, bells are off, which they are. I'm pretty tired, so I don't want to do this twice. <laughs> so nothing showing up there on the map. Let's go. Well, yeah, I was already here. It's been a long day. This is, uh, yeah, this is current here. 8.11 UTC time, up around 9.37 or so. There's earthquakes there. Quite a few earthquakes um, in the last couple hours, including some of these smaller ones throughout the last UTC time here. That includes the afternoon and early morning. We've seen a number of earthquakes there across the Mount Rainier volcano. Now, it doesn't look anything like it did back in July, right? When it all started 
with that earthquake swarm. Let me show you guys. Doesn't look anything like that. But the thing is, you know, and there was a lot of earthquakes striking out there. The thing is that we're still seeing earthquake activity there across this area. And uh, it really hasn't ever completely died out. They may state that, but these are all earthquakes out here. So I'll continue to watch that. Nothing of any um, um, escalation as far as magma movement goes, but uh, it's definitely an interesting earthquake swarm. Kind of curious to see what they'll say next. Oh, there is no earthquakes happening. Yes, there are. You just got to go look at the seismograph stations there. It seems like the last week they've completely shut off the reporting here. Maybe only reporting reporting one or two earthquakes out here. But there's way more. All right. Uh, let me check out Mount St. Helens as well. They're in Washington. Just checking real quick. See if we got anything on that seismograph station. Because that was showing some earthquake activity as well in the last couple updates here. Got, uh, well, there's, there's some S waves there from, let's see, what struck here in the last couple hours out here? That was from yesterday, 1921. It was probably that 5.8 down there. No, oh, that'd be about 8 o'clock or so. There was something else out here that got, uh, Kind of looks like a bigger quake. Uh, and I say that because the seismograph station there is picking up some type of S wave from a bigger earthquake somewhere. But, um, man, I don't see anything here. Was it, That was from this morning. It had to have been here in the last... I wonder if it was that 4.7 that it picked up. No, because that was around 8 o'clock or so. Anyway, I don't know. A little weird. <coughs> man, all right. Uh, as far as earthquake activity, that's kind of why I was focusing on it here. There's a couple smaller quakes there in the uh, background noise. There's well-defined one. Quite a few other ones in there as well. So, you know, it's not as active as Mount Rainier as far as earthquake activity goes, but I have noticed an uptick. So we'll kind of keep checking back on that volcano as well. Um, Mount Baker is kind of a, a well... Not all that monitored. I don't even know if this seismograph station's working here. Yeah, that one's way overblown in terms of the amplitude. This one looks all right. Uh, I don't see any... I mean, I guess that's kind of a localized earthquake. This is a distant earthquake from somewhere. Um, but uh, anyway, all right, let's go ahead and move on. Check out the rest of the area here. Got a 3.6 up in Alaska, the Aleutian Trench there. Russia still seeing some movement. Look at this quake right here. Earlier this afternoon, a 4.1. 326 miles deep. That is a deep earthquake. I'm starting to wonder here if we're not quite done with movement around this area. Now, according to the USGS, this 8.8 uh, .8 here, back in July, only partially released the strain out here along the Kuro Kamchatka. So, uh, and I say that because there was some interesting earthquake activity here literally a six pointer back prior to the subduction zone that's a very interesting quake and now a uh, deep earthquake underneath the sea of osk here and of course that is associated with the subduction zone and that will further add strain across this area here uh, following that deep quake we had one stir up here about an hour and 30 minutes later um, in the same zone but much shallower at 21 miles deep so we'll continue to watch that Nothing else going down south there along the uh, Japan area. Although EMSC reporting one 3.6 here on the west side of Japan. There's a Guam earthquake there from last night. I'm going to move the quakes down just a little bit. There we go. Um, slight uptick here around the Taiwan area southward. And that is to be expected following the movement back over here. Normally apply strain along this area when, whenever we get uh, movement across this plate boundary here. That's the uh, Filipino and the Pacific plate boundary. Uh, New Zealand holding steady there, 4.7 on, along the Kermadec Trench. Not a whole lot happening there as far as any larger movement goes. Uh, a lot of activity back over here across Turkey though. Look at that, 6.1 and uh, a bunch of aftershocks. Now it looks like only the, lar the largest here has been a uh, 4.2 as far as an aftershock goes. A 6.1 striking this morning. Um, really not uh, 
There's 4.2. Quite a few twos and threes in there. There may be even another four or so. A couple fours in there that the USGS did not account for. But uh, it's we looked at historical seismic activity in this area, and they can get some sevens around there. Uh, but I'm not 100% certain if we're going to see that. we got to watch the aftershock sequences there and see how they behave. Uh, or if we start, uh, you know, noticing the uh, amplitude or the uh, magnitude there getting bigger. Right now, that looks typical there for an aftershock sequence for a uh, 6.1. But uh, we will continue to check back on that. It's been uh, relatively quiet out there. This is nowhere near where the seven upper 7 struck back in 2023. That was back over here across the plate boundary. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet there on the map. Same for the USGS or the uh, EMSC here on the globe. Older quake there from yesterday. Uh, so a little bit of uptick going on out here. Just we're always in motion. Plates are always moving out here. Java Trench uh, three-pointer it looks like there across the area. All right, let's go ahead and check out uh, space weather real quick here. Got a little sea flare coming in. Had a number of M flares here in the last couple days. That was off of a sunspot here, which is still flaring with a sea flare. Uh, but that, and even this area out over here. Uh, those two regions, this one's out of sight, out of mind. Notice the flare is still well above uh, the western limb there. So that one may behave like that as well. Uh, so we may see some continued flare activity from these sunspots until they completely disappear off the western limb. Uh, we're left uh, center disc pretty quiet. There is a couple active areas out on the eastern limb that uh, you know, they're somewhat bright in terms of the UV image. 4179 over here. Uh, really not all that concerned with it. It doesn't look all that impressive. This area does have a little dynamic core here. Although it looks a little bit weaker from this morning. Either way, we'll continue to watch this area. It may uh, stir up and it may just fade away here overnight. We'll have to watch that. Right now, the overall flare threat, about a 50% chance there for M flare. X flare is still around 10% and that is because of these areas that are still somewhat viewable here uh, from the Earth. No major roars there in the forecast for now. Pretty quiet across the board there. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information here on the hurricane status. Uh, remember this morning I was showing you guys the uh, potential hurricane. Well, let's see what it shows tonight. Let's take a look here. I'm not, I guess we'll be able to see it if it gets anywhere near the land. This one shows a little bit closer um, path for that uh, potential hurricane. More than likely, it's going to turn into a hurricane. We just got uh, to watch where it wants to go. This model showing a little bit closer here to the eastern portion of the country uh, compared to the previous couple runs. So we will watch that and because um, that could be a big one. And it all, all it takes is a couple different areas of pressure differences to maybe drive that area into the Gulf, and that would be bad news. But uh, we'll check back on that as we get a little bit closer. I'm trying to think what else there is. I think that's about it. A uh, little earthquake there on Anza. Russia, a little spike. There's a couple little spikes there in Northern California. Nothing big going on here for now, but... Uh, Hawaii still got a little earthquake activity out there. Deeper areas underneath Pahala. I guess we better double check that real quick. Check out Kilauea Volcano and see if there's anything changing there on the deformation chart. Still going up. This is the vertical displacement there, inflation. This is the um, inflation leading up to the last eruption there that happened about on the 5th or 6th of August, episode 30. Short-lived, so it dropped like a rock there. Now we're starting to go back up. Uh, it looks like we're um, following the same previous episodes there. So we should see another eruption here. Oh, well, you still got a few days or so before we even get to that point. All right, have a good one, folks. I'm out of here. I'm going to call it a night. Need a little sleep, that's for sure. We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow for the Monday morning update. Have a good one, everyone.